Wow. Greetings. Affirmation of status in the form of an affidavit. Notice to agent is notice to principal, and notice to principal is notice to agent. I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, non-state citizen, and uh, paramount security interest holder to property and collateral, both registered and unregistered, belonging to Derek Chaton Gonzalez, all capital letter name, a corporate United States citizen doing business as Derek Chaton Gonzalez, all capital letter name, the person of the corporate state of Nebraska, it's actually the state of Arizona, being first duly sworn, depose, say, and declare by my autograph that the following facts are true, correct, and not misleading, and complete to the best of my knowledge and belief. I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, non-state citizen, and paramount security interest holder to the property and collateral, both registered and unregistered, belonging to the debtor, hereby serve your office with official notice of my lawful standing as a man and paramount security interest holder, I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton of, uh, family of Gonzalez, have interest in all affairs of the debtor, all assets of the debtor, am exempt from levy and relieved of all liability from the debtor. Notice, the following lawful establishments shall apply upon this notice. One, all commercial contracts and or legal duties listing the debtor have been lawfully canceled, rescinded, and or revoked for cause as they are invalid and unenforceable. Two, as a man and paramount security interest holder, I am Distinguish it, uh, distinguished, set apart, and object to any and all body atta body attachments to the debtor and or legal person known as Derek Chaton Gonzalez, all capital letters, a corporate United States citizen doing business as Derek Chaton Gonzalez, all capital letters, of the corporate state of Arizona. Number three. No agency or corporate entity shall have jurisdiction over I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, and does not require license or permission to exercise any natural right. If you find this affidavit of status as a man known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, to be an heir, send rebuttal of the points herein to I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, signed by an authorized representative or attorney for your corporation under oath and agreement to testify to the facts and understanding supporting all the, the rebutted articles contained in this affidavit by and through a uh, competent fact witness with evidence which would be admissible at trial which sets the matter for a hearing before a jury under penalty of perjury and assuming full legal and commercial liability. Do, 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 do. Good to be back. Uh, I gotta stay away from talking about the old jabby jabby. That's how I got banned. I uh, went to uh, state a post or post a post about how it's destroying fa friends, family, personal relationships, all the. Uh, rhetoric and uh, the funny thing is you guys didn't even get to see the post and I got banned instantaneously upon posting it. Furthermore, if your corporate agency has any lawful commercial and or legal duty claim against I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, submit it within 21 days after the date of receipt of this notice to the address below with valid proof of claim of corpus delecti and I will make them whole event of default if an unauthorized representative of your agency fails to respond with a valid affidavit of status in the form of a rebuttal or does not or cannot provide a true bill of commerce and a complete assessment of any commercial claim and or legal duty against I man 
or your uh, or you ignore this notice and remain silent without stating your claim for a period of 21 days then you accept my claim of lawful establishments herein by tacit agreement and my affidavit will stand as truth in law and commerce your default under the maxims of law will constitute your agreement that any alleged claim against this living breathing flesh and blood sentient man known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, are unfounded in common law and thus do not and cannot exist. Further, affiant saith not honorably. By Derek Chaton Gonzalez, agent, I, man, known to use the name Derek Chaton, family of Gonzalez, in the interest of Derek Chaton Gonzalez, ends legus, all capital letters, without prejudice, i.e. all natural inalienable rights reserved. I hope you guys picked up what I was just laying down there. Notice, using a notary on this document does not constitute any adhesion, nor does it alter my status in any manner. The purpose for notarization is verification and identification only and not for uh, entrance into any foreign jurisdiction. <clears throat> How you guys been? Hope that helps you out. Little uh, little notice of status there. Uh, everybody's big on this notice of status and status correction. Sometimes the status correction is just in your paperwork. And dealing with these people who are bringing uh, false claims against you or the estate, uh, presuming and assuming somehow that you're liable for it. And simply all you have to do is Put them on notice and give them 21 days to respond. When they can't respond in 21 days, they acquiesce by uh, tacit agree agreement as silence is acquiescence. And now they don't have any jurisdiction. All right, we rip it away from them. So what are some of the questions you can ask uh, that will keep you from making statements for which the burden of, uh, of proof would fall upon you? Um, who is primarily liable for the name? Who has the primary active degree of fault for the name? And I'll tell you right now, the answer to that is the President of the United States, because when they took the gold in 1933, they then and there uh, were, uh, uh, were responsible for all debts, okay? They're responsible for everything, ladies and gentlemen. They're holding everything in trust, and then they're, they're barring you from accessing it, and they're using it for their own unjust enrichment and gains. <clears throat> so, can you be the name? Well, that's a question for them to answer, not for you. Don't go into speculation and start and start answering the questions that I'm asking. Instead, ask them for the answer because, after all, they're the end all, be all. They know it all. They see it all. They hear it all. Right? They're the they're the all knowing, all powerful oracle of the world. Right? Satan's little minions. But what's funny is when you start asking these poignant questions, when you start getting down to the heart of it, uh, they cannot answer it. Um, which means they're going to fault, and then they're going to default, and then they become primarily liable. Another way I like doing it is granting the name to the court, uh, uh, along with all the liability that comes with it. Watch how fast they run away from that name. The problem is they can't run away from it. Uh, this, me and this Hornet have gone rounds today. He's eventually going to die. All right. So anyway, what other questions can you ask? What other, what other things can you do to remain in honor? Um, remember, there are only two ways to remain in honor. Agree with thy adversary quickly and pay the debt, or conditionally accept the offer uh, and dictate the terms and conditions. Okay? Yeah, I'll accept those charges. I'll do 14 months in prison, but you're going to pay me $2.5 million for doing it. Well, we're not going to do that. Well, then I guess we don't have an agreement, do we? And if there was a real injured party and it was a real criminal event, then um, we probably wouldn't be discussing terms and conditions, would we? Because I would have been federally indicted by a grand jury and then facing a real trial in a competent court of competent jurisdiction. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, they say it's criminal, but everything is civil, period. Well, if it's civil, bring forward the contract that I knowingly, willingly, and intentionally entered into and bring forward the witnesses with firsthand perfected knowledge that I did so. You're never going to find that either. And if they do find that, 
It's a unilateral contract, which means you have the right to exit at any time you see fit. What are some of the grounds for you leaving contracts and remaining in honor? Well, all contracts are supposed to be mutually beneficial for all parties involved. If all of a sudden you find out uh, through a little bit of due diligence that these contracts are no longer mutually beneficial for all parties involved, in fact, you are the one that's taking it in the shorts, you have the ability to end all those contracts and to send cease and desist orders and stop them from utilizing your private special privy information. You also have a right to, to uh, have full disclosure. Uh, a right to discovery. You also have a right to depose the claimant. Who gives a shit about the witnesses, ladies and gentlemen? Let's just be real honest here. I could give a shit less about your witnesses if there's no injured party. Don't care what they saw or what they heard. Unless the party agreed, willing to uh, uh, produce a verified statement of fact structured in the form of an affidavit of how I caused them harm, loss, or damage, I could care less about what they saw. What else can we talk about just briefly? Anyway, I'm back. Nevertheless, I'm going to be uh, mindful of what I post on the old fascist book nowadays because uh, I'm now banned from groups for another 26 days, which I never participated in any group shit on here anyway, which I just find humorous. Um, what else can we talk about? Are you going to claim the name? Everybody says, oh, you're playing the name game. It's not a name game, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a game at all. Uh, in fact, I'm just the one trying to find out who's primarily liable for it. I've been known to use it, but it doesn't mean I own it, and I have no proof that I own it. Uh, does the state or its representation have any evidence to the contrary that I own it? Hmm. Guessing not, being that you're silent over there, you dirtbag. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Don't be afraid to take everything to trial by way of jury. That'll stop these assholes in their tracks. Under Title 26, 2603, 2203, 20, uh, 2002, and 2001, they are responsible for the, carry, uh, the taxes on a carryover uh, evaluation basis. And um, every time that you go to a trial by way of jury, it's going to cost them around twenty six to to $56,000 just on a low-end budget. So all of these things... Um, can come to a head real quick if everybody just says, oh, fuck it. We're not doing discovery. We're not doing anything. We're just going to go right to trial by way of jury. It'll freak them all out. Everybody thinks, oh, well, if we do a, a, a trial by jury, then there's a possibility I'm going to go to jail. Look, you're going to get fleeced any fucking way you look at it. So stand up and sound off like you got a fucking pair and just let them have it. Just flat out tell them, hey, you know what? Uh, under uh, Title 26, 2032, AE 11, all you bastards are responsible for being independently bonded in case you cause me harm by falsifying a record and bringing fraud upon this court in doing so. Where is the claimant uh, making a, sp a, a general appearance before this court today, independently bonding this case, invoking the jurisdiction of this court with a statement of fact structured as an affidavit that has been deposed and verified. Where's it at? Because if it's not in this court, and it's not in this court case file jacket, guess what? You lying, looting, pander, and pieces of shit are mine. You see, the reason I like trial by way of jury is I'm going to turn around and take those 12 jury members and I'm going to make them my federal fucking witnesses when I fry their asses for extortion, bear uh, fraud upon the court, falsifying a record. Yeah. So let's do a trial by jury, ladies and gentlemen. When you start to become learned, this becomes a lot of fucking fun. Your 12 jury members are now your 12 federal witnesses. And the only question you got to ask when you walk in there is where the fuck is the plaintiff today, you fuck sticks? You realize the only reason you 12 jury members are here is because now you're my federal witnesses to the atrocity and the crime and the violation of the Constitution and, and Baratre and mixed war? The only reason you're here is because the jackass sitting on top of the bench knew full on fucking well that ignorance of the law excuses no one after doing seven years in college to become a judge and being pampered and catered to and, and molded to their specifications to qualify as a judge. And you mean to tell me that ignorant wretch doesn't know that if there's no goddamn plaintiff, there's no fucking claim? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Just think about it. Just think about how much fun you can have with these lying, looting, pandering pieces of shit. Rats in the woodpile, I like to call them. That's what they are. They're traitorous rat bastards, and every last one of them should be swinging from their nuts from a piece of nylon rope, bellering like a stuck fucking hog, and we should leave them there for weeks on end until their testicles fall off and shrivel up because these motherfuckers shouldn't be breeding anymore. That's the truth of it. <sighs> what else can we do?
Sorry, it's seven days of pimped up aggression ready to uh, unleash and let you guys know what it, what's real and what's really happening. Oh, yeah, Facebook, this whole data breach thing, this this uh, whistleblower. I hope you guys are intelligent enough to know what the hell that is. Okay, I, I, I feel embarrassed that I even have to explain it, but I do know there's a lot of ignorant people out there that are like, oh, hooray, we have a whistleblower. Yay. First off. Let me just explain this to you. She stole over 20,000 documents from Facebook. That can be construed as nothing more than corporate espionage, and she's not even being tried with that, or uh, uh, criminal uh, sanctions and charges are not being brought against her by Facebook. 20,000 documents, allegedly, from her own mouth on 60 Minutes, where she says, I took uh, 20,000 copies of things in Facebook that were cause for concern. Now, first of all, if I'm running Facebook and you steal from my corporation, I'm going to get you for theft of my private intellectual property or Facebook's private intellectual property, and I'm going to sue the shit out of you. And I'm also going to bring criminal charges against your ass. And, and, and on, a, on a third note here, you have to be very cognitive of what's going on. She's not a whistleblower, ladies and gentlemen. She's advocating for more censorship. Are you guys not seeing what the hell is going on? Wake the fuck up. Wake up. Smell the roses. It smells like shit, don't it? Yeah, because they're not fucking roses. This is a chocolate-covered turd designed to look like a rose, and when you scratch and sniff it, you get poo-poo on your nose. Don't smell very fucking good. Think about that for just a fucking minute, ladies and gentlemen. Anything that they want you to see is published on 60 Minutes, Fox News, MSN, CNBC, CNN, ABC, all those major shit shows, right? Because they want you to believe they're there for you. Let me just point this out real crystal fucking clear. She's advocating for more censorship, and they're going to get it because all you whack-a-moles are out there going, yay, whistleblowers. Real whistleblowers, the real motherfucking deals, end up like Julian Assange and Edward Snowden and they're blackballed in 86, or they're killed like John McAfee, which I don't really think he's fucking dead. I think he's probably out there in Antarctica, where 148 nations, without dropping one single ounce of blood, all agreed unanimously that no civilian will ever be allowed to be out there. Just think about that for a minute. We're always at war with other nations, but all of a sudden all these nations come together and decide... You know what? Screw it. We don't even need to fight over this. Antarctica can be all of ours that are involved in government and politics. We'll decide who goes there with our military. And there's no need to fight over Antarctica, is there, guys? I mean, can we uh, just have a ha-ha moment with ourselves and bar everybody from Antarctica? What do you think is actually going on down in Antarctica? You think it's a haven for the rich and the lustful? I think so. Where are all these children that are being abducted year uh Year-round, over 800,000 in just America alone. That's almost a million children a year. Never seen again. Their remains never fucking found. Where are they taking them? Where are they going? Think about that one for a minute. Where is Hillary Clinton? Where is Barack Obama? Where are, where's Eric Holder? Where's his, where's his accountability for selling guns to the Mexican cartel, ladies and gentlemen? Are you processing this shit? How quickly we forget about Timothy McVeigh. I mean, you start to look at the World Trade Center's collapsing under, uh, what, two fuel, uh, fuel uh, planes, and yet the Pinsky truck allegedly used in the Oklahoma City bombing, um, theoretically, scientifically, and physically, couldn't have done as much damage as it did to the Oklahoma City bombing. It just couldn't. It, it's not plausible. And all of a sudden, when you really start to study the Oklahoma City bombing, you realize the FBI was already there, the bomb squad was already there, uh, the ATF was already there on site. I mean, that's, I mean, call a cop today and tell him you're being mugged, and you might be lucky to see one in 45 fucking minutes. Before the bomb even goes off, you got the ATF, the bomb squad, and the fucking state police and FBI already on location. That is amazing, phenomenal response time. There's just so much, so much. How about that Terry Nichols guy, the alleged assistant with Timothy McVeigh in the collapse of this building? Mind you, everybody has forgotten what was in that fucking building that was so precious. Information about Hillary Robin Clinton. Hmm, imagine that. World Trade Center, largest gold and silver heist the world has ever seen. And Building 7 miraculously just decided to give up that day. It was, it was strong as an ox, and all of a sudden it was like, huh. Twin Towers are falling. Fuck it, I'm going down too. I'm out of here. Remember, remember, not one plane hit Building 7. Not one. So just food for thought. Boy, me and this one are going to have at it here in a minute. Yeah, yeah, you want to do it on camera? I'll whack your ass right on camera. Come on over here, you fucker. So anyway, 
<clears throat> Just food for thought. So, can you be the name? Where's your right to face your accuser? Sixth Amendment, right? I mean, all these all these jackasses. You know what we should be voting on this uh, this upcoming election? Whether we're using nylon or hemp to hang these people by their scrotum. That's right. Hang them by their testicles. That's what we should really pull together and vote on. Let's let's not vote on the next bumbling idiot that's the part of the Geritol crew in their fucking 70s and 80s that can't articulate a fucking sentence to save their fucking lives. Let's articulate and let's vote on what we hang them with. Do we use ne nylon, a neoprene rope, or do we use uh, hemp? Let, let's 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 do a real vote that would really matter, that would really count. You know what? And I bet they wouldn't fudge those those elections and those votes because uh, it's a lose lose for their asses. They're not gonna they're not gonna meddle with that election because oh my gosh, who wants to be hung with nylon? It's got too much uh, flex to it. You know, we might bounce a little bit. That for Pete's sake, our head might pop off on national television. I vote we go with uh, hemp, little little less elastic to it. Elasticity. I know, I'm being a little honorary today. Gonna be back here babbling at the lips over here on Facebook. So, what else can we uh, kind of shed some light on? There hasn't been a judge in this country since 1791. The first Congress that ever assembled, really, there was only 20 out of 81 people that showed up, so that's really not a Congress. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yes, the active primary uh, uh, primary liability of default falls on the president of the United States after 1933 when they took all our gold and silver ladies and gentlemen old old debts are prepaid and if they're not prepaid then somebody ought to get a hold of Joe Biden and tell his bumbling idiot ass to get the checkbook out from the treasury and start writing checks to pay everybody's fucking bills off and mortgages off Africa is now fighting against uh, the corrupt government over there they're they're trying to hold a constitutional court where they they plan on executing and euthanizing the president of Africa as, as well as the bankers and politicians that sold them out so that'll be interesting to sit back and, and watch how that unfolds uh, let's see what else can we discuss here just a lot going on in the world but happy to be back with you guys nevertheless my posts are going to be a little different um, because I've been forewarned by Big Bad Zuckerberg that uh, if if my rhetoric does not change in the near future, I will be permanently banned from fascist book, which, whatever, I really don't give a shit anymore. Um, I do find it kind of comical uh, that people are running around so happy about the whistleblower and don't even realize she's not a real whistleblower, ladies and gentlemen, or asked to be in jail for corporate espionage right now. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Anonymous says hi to you guys. He's almost done with the W-4 class as well as the IRS class. I did get back from the U.S. tax pet uh, court petition uh, sua sponte judgment from a, from an alleged uh, administrator. Um, of course, they're saying that they don't have jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. So now we're going to move forward with a couple FOIA requests and a FOIA request to the FBI to find out whether I've ever... Uh, sold guns, tobacco, or alcohol for profit and registered or ever uh, worked for a federal government as an agent and agency, that'll come back as a negative, which means Title 27 and Title 26 don't apply to me. Um, because that, uh, what Title 26 applies to is alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. And if you've not partaken in any of that and you've never been an agent and agency for the government, you don't owe taxes. So how does the state come in and say somehow I owe them something when you have a right uh, to either consent to be governed or not to consent to be governed? And if you choose not to be governed, well, then what say you to their rules, codes, statutes, ordinance, and city, city uh, rules apply to you? No, they don't. No, they don't. The fear tactics are just unbelievable this day and age, watching these people scurry around like rats. Let me tell you something. When the shit finally goes down... These people will feed on each other like rats in a sinking ship. Uh, when rats run out of cheese, they'll start eating their own. And that's what you're going to see with lawyers. Lawyers are going to start eating each other to try and steal from one another because they're not going to have anything else to feed on anymore for much longer. I can't wait to see the, uh, the bar association go down. It's coming. Uh, with this economic collapse, there's going to be a lot of things that change. 
still has not uh, swayed my my view on getting prepared. Go out there and buy some heirloom seeds. You can buy a five gallon bucket with over six hundred thousand heirloom seeds. Uh, that will be better than um, many forms of gold and silver as currency down the road. I feel because the ultimate goal is to control your food source. They're going to use it as a weapon against you. Remember what made Hitler so powerful is he said he would feed the hungry and for most purposes he fulfilled his obligation because the ones he couldn't feed he killed off and the ones he could feed well they helped kill off the ones that he didn't feel like feeding so just remember that uh, you New Yorkers out there that are facing some trying times where very soon the reality from what it looks like is you may not be able to go to a store a dentist office a doctor's office a hospital or anywhere else for that matter uh, unless you do the old, you know, all know what that means. So, let's say, I'll be back with you later on today. We're going to delve into equity, the Bible. Um, we're going to work on some how to adequately defend yourself in a court situation where the court is held on the four corners of paper. I'm going to show you how to ask proper questions. But remember these three things. These three things are probably the most important. I require, as a man, to depose the claimant. I require full disclosure, because under CFR 2772.11, all crimes are commercial, which means this is a commercial activity. I need your W-9s, I need the 1099 OID, the, the Form 56F, the Form 56, I need your 1099As, Bs, and Cs, and I want to see that you filled out the 1099R properly. So to make sure that you know you're compliant with the IRS, and we we know where all these securities that are being monetized are going off to, in my good name, without my express written consent. Um, and the third one, we require discovery. Three things: I require to depose the claimant, I require full disclosure, and I require discovery. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys real soon. Uh, also, I have. Two classes that are completed. One is how to beat the bank, and the other one is, uh, Lord forgive me, I'm drawing a blank here. No, for the love of God. Um, the other class, land patent class. And recently I had somebody send me over a deal for the people in Canada. I have a video for you guys, I'll post it a little bit later on. Um, it's called The Queen's Bargain. I want you to go look that up. If you're in Canada, they're trying to kick you out of your house. They're trying to kick you off your land. They're trying to stop you from fishing. They're trying to do any of that horse shit. I want you to go look up the Queen's Bargain, okay? And the Queen's Bargain is very important for you guys in Canada because it's equivalent to the land patent in the United States of America, all right? So thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys again. Hello from New York. What's going on, Frank? What's going on in Ground Zero in New York, man? Let us know. Love to hear from you. Uh, my Australian brothers over there, I see you guys, and New Zealand, how's it going? Uh, glad to be back, and we'll talk to you guys real soon.